Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. I'm your host, Coriel, and here at the Girl Stop Playing Show, we encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. On today's show, we are getting into the mind of a man, which I know is one of y'all favorite things to do. And we got one of my favorite fellas in the building. The one and only, <laughs> the author, the relationship coach, Mr. Stefan Lebassier <laughs> is in the building, y'all. Did I say it right? You, pretty damn good. I've been yeah. practicing for 10 <laughs> years to get this name right, and I got it a little, a little okay. So I'm proud of myself for that. So listen, for those of y'all who don't know, Stefan and I go like way, way back. Way back. I, I mean, I think it's like 2013 something crazy 2013 2014 so to have this full circle conversation is mm. definitely um a treat um but before we get into it we got to get things warmed up okay okay so we're gonna play problem. a little game okay. you ready i'm, I'm Don't always be nervous. ready <laughs> <clears throat> this is a little game of this or that so i'm just gonna name two options and you just choose your, your favorite okay all right so do you prefer a private chef or a five-star restaurant private chef Okay. Are you more of a picnic in the park date kind of guy or a helicopter ride kind of guy? Picnic in the park. All right. 112 or Drew Hill? 112. <laughs> okay. Um, would you prefer to date a woman who's a corporate manager or a successful entrepreneur? Successful entrepreneur. All right. And last but not least, for all of the points, Fresh Prince or Martin? Dang, Martin. <laughs> we need some sound effects. I need some wah, wah, wah. No, that was good. That was good. That was good. Okay, you warm? I'm warm. You warm. All right. Warm. I was a little surprised by the Drew Hill thing, but I'm going to let you slide. <laughs> Let's get into, though, the corporate manager versus the successful entrepreneur. Uh, now, B. Simone got herself in a little trouble. I don't want you to get in any trouble, so think before you speak. Of course, so always. what makes you... I mean, you had to choose one or the other, but what makes you say I would be more interested in dating a successful entrepreneur? The first thing that popped in my mind was she has more flexibility. Mm. And that was it. That's the main thing. I thought for, I was actually think, reconsidering for a second because I'm like, all right, but we all know entrepreneurs is like 24 mm seven -hmm. and it's hard to shut off. It is. But you have the power if you want to, to make it you see what I'm saying, yeah. where the corporate manager has to answer to someone. And I, I don't like that. Yeah. I, I mean, again, if I have to deal with it, it is what it is. But that would not be my preference. Have you dated? Like, has this been a situation for you? No, no. not really. Mm -mm. So I've definitely I think that's what B. Simone was trying to say. You know, the people just kind of ran with it. But I think that <laughs> that was her intention. And I have actually heard the opposite from an entrepreneur who had a preference of dating a woman with a typical nine to five or a career for more of like the certainty of it and the benefits of it, you know, the insurance and the things and all of those things that come along with it. Um, so I, I've heard both sides, but I definitely agree with you with the freedom and flexibility thing. I think it's like a, I couldn't imagine like the freedom and flexibility back when I was working the nine to five. So mm -hmm. I think it's like a, you're on two different, you know, um, wavelengths. Yeah, and I think, it, you know, the, the person who had that other perspective I don't know their situation, but they may be speaking from a position of they don't have certainty of their own mm -hmm, financial mm -hmm, position. Mm -hmm. So they have to be more concerned with the woman. Yep. I have no <laughs> we'll concern. I'll we'll 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 just got say you. it. We got you. We got you. Okay. You know, that, uh, no. Not an no, issue. No, we don't worry about issue. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, catch us up. What's your current relationship status? Single. He's single, ladies. Okay, so we're going to get into the shoot your shot section at the end of the show. But So stay tuned. Oh, but for now, I want to talk about the work that you do because it's so important. Um, you are a certified relationship coach. I know mm -hmm. that you are working with women from all you know diverse histories, backgrounds, diverse challenges. But across the board, from what you're seeing right now, is there like a most common issue or concern or challenge that single women um, are seeking your help for? Okay, seeking. I think the seeking part <laughs> is trying to just understand men, just trying to understand, like, what does he mean when he says this? Or why is he behaving like this? Why won't he want a relationship? That type of thing. That's what they're seeking. What the actual issue is that I see that's common amongst women and people in general is a lack of healing. Mm. that's the number one issue. So you may start by asking me questions about that, but if we dive deep into your situation, 
we start realizing, okay, there's some things from your past you never healed from. And it's contributing to why a, a lot of women's confusion with men is not because you don't know. It's because you struggle with embracing what you know and accepting your intuition, accepting the facts that's been laid out before you mm -hmm. because you don't want to have to walk away. You don't want to accept that reality because, again, if a lot of times when you're coming from that place of lack of healing, it, there's so many different factors now that now play into why you struggle to accept what's really going on here. So to me, I'm I'm really just helping you realize or confirm mm -hmm. what you already knew deep inside. Mm -hmm. I'm not always like I don't s seek to say some brand new stuff. I'm just saying what you needed to hear. How are are women receptive to it? I yeah. mean, they obviously sign up so they you know respect your opinion. But do you ever feel yourself having to deliver information or a message that is not received well? So, so they're they're receptive. Um, but they don't always do the work. <laughs> they so, listen, but they ain't going to do yeah, the work. Yeah, so that's the thing, especially with the healing. And, and again, I know healing is hard. You know what I'm saying? And going through that whole process is not easy, but that's it has to happen. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't, we're going to keep seeing the same issues. So. so what are some, I guess, signs, like for the people who are watching this and they mm -hmm. want to become more self-aware, but maybe maybe they're the people you know who you're talking about, but they mm -hmm. don't recognize that that's them. What are some like red flags of things that people say to you and you're like, oh, yep, you probably need some healing. Like what are some things okay. that we just might not recognize? To me, if you're holding on to very negative perceptions of things or people, you need to heal. A anyone who's healed can start to see the good that exists. It doesn't mean we're blind mm -hmm. to the negativity and the toxic energy and everything out there, but we know good exists because now <clears throat> when you're healed, the good in you rises to the top. So if you know you're good, it's easier to believe someone else is good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but when you don't have that in you, if you have negativity dwelling within you, you're going to always see negative in other people. You know what I'm saying? So to me, yeah, negative perceptions, when people are extremely judgmental, all right, to me, that is a sign of you having healed. Again, healed, happy people don't go around trying to judge and condemn everybody, all right? That doesn't, that's not how, if anything, that person wants to stay away from drama, wants to stay away from all these extra negative confrontations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they won't have a, they would have an issue expressing themselves, but they just don't engage in those things. Mm -hmm. So when you're so willing to engage in being negative and arguing and being judgmental, you're not healed. You got negative energy inside you that you haven't resolved. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and then the other thing is just, for me, it's not what they say. I, it's just an energy. It's just a spirit. If I'm in your presence and I feel this hardness, I feel this closed off. And I understand people want to say, oh, yeah, but if you don't know someone, you want, you're want, you not going to automatically be open. I get that. I think there's a level, there's a difference between being cautious mm -hmm. and observing and being standoffish and afraid and walled up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I'm not knocking anyone for surveying the situation before they open themselves mm -hmm. up. But nah, a lot of people just have walls up. So the people who say, you know, you see the Atlanta quotes, right? <laughs> like it's no good man in Atlanta. Uh -huh. It's no single man in Atlanta. It's no straight man in Atlanta. People who say those things, that would be like red flag for you. Like this person needs healing or this person may just have well, a negative mindset like is is that what you mean or no no so for those i'm not going to automatically jump to they need healing because i think a lot of people have been brainwashed you know again people i remember when i first moved to georgia people were saying and they still say it oh the ratio's 10 to mm -hmm. 1 ain't no damn 10 to 1 ratio <laughs> like look at the census data it's like 1.1 something or 1.2 to 1 and then they say oh but men are gay and men in prison okay there's gay women there are women in y'all never discount those mm -hmm. from the women's side. And then that whole statement, the premise is every woman in, in circulation is a good woman, but it's only a handful Deserving of, of good, this good men. Yes, but it's only a handful of good men in the circulation of men who are available. That's not true. So is that just a fear based thing that women tell themselves to make themselves feel better about why they don't have the man that they're seeking? Yes, it, it's 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 fear based. It's validation for why there's not success. It's easy to blame external forces as to why I'm not getting what I want um, rather than to look myself in the mirror and accept mm. maybe there's something that I need to do differently. You know, it's the same thing. And, and for anyone who feels some kind of way about that, it's like if a man came to you who was broke and not doing nothing with himself. He said, oh, there ain't no jobs out here. 
He'd be like, nah, bro, you're just not hustling. You're just not applying yourself correctly. Mm -hmm. And you're going the easy route by claiming the economy and job. And it doesn't mean that there isn't negative factors mm -hmm, in those mm -hmm. areas. But people who succeed don't give in to those negative thoughts. Facts. Plain and simple. Facts. So a couple episodes ago, we had Steve Harvey's daughter here, Carly Harvey. Um, mm -hmm. Carly Harvey Raymond. Let me put some respect on her husband's <laughs> name, okay? And we talked about the 90-day rule, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Steve Harvey's book, his 90-day rule, you don't have sex with a man before 90 days. How do you feel about that rule in particular? And then what's your perspective on sex and dating? Okay, so that rule in particular... I'm not a fan of specific rules like that. And, and don't get me wrong. I get it because I guess you could argue some of the things that I teach are rules. I just think that hard deadline timelines like that, are they can be tricky because, okay, you may have been dating him for 90 days, mm -hmm. but you don't know him in 90 days because you haven't had the tough conversations. You're not asking the right questions. You know what I'm saying? And even if he lasted 90 days, he may have been acting a fool the whole 90 days. Just because he's still around doesn't mean, oh, now it's mm -hmm. time to move forward and, and, and get, you know, get together that way. So to me, it, it's, not, it's less about the 90 days specifically, and it's about the work that was supposed to be done in the 90 days. Mm -hmm. Now, if you complete that work in 30 days, and you know what you're getting yourself into, and you know what he wants, and you guys are on the same page, y'all are grown adults. Y'all can make y'all choice. But again, it's not the specific time. It's mm -hmm. the work. Now, as far as sex and dating... To me, I just think that people have to be honest with themselves about what they can handle. All right. We can go the, the spiritual route and say, wait till marriage. But we know realistically, most people ain't waiting. And so what I tell women is like, don't sleep with him until you're OK with what happens next. So if you sleep with him today and he doesn't call you tomorrow and you're going to feel cheated and robbed because he didn't call you, you shouldn't have slept with him. That means you slept with him for the wrong reasons. You slept with him because you were expecting something to come out of it. Mm -hmm. If you sleep with him in the dating phase, it better be because you just want to enjoy this experience. That's how you're feeling. I'm not saying you should feel that way, but that's your choice. And at least now, if things don't go as planned, you don't feel like, oh, my gosh, you know, I you cheated lost. myself. I lost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that can be very discouraging and send women down a negative spiral from there. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it's just be honest with yourself about that, but also be honest about how long you need to have clarity on what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Sex can cloud judgment. So if you jump in too fast, it can easily mess things up because now you start overlooking red flags that you shouldn't overlook. You know what I'm saying? And, and here's the crazy thing. People love to act like it's because it's good sex. There are tons, millions, hundreds of millions of women who have held on to men and it was bad sex. Mm -hmm. All right. The whole good sex thing is a cop out. You became attached because emotionally you wanted to hold on to him. Or by giving your body, you now become more emotionally attached to this man. And now it's of an investment you've made. And women struggle to walk away from their investments. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be real. What Can you handle this without getting caught up? So speaking of investment, I literally put a post up today that said um, he told you he was not interested in anything serious. So why would you continue wasting your time trying to give him time to change his mind? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that women, we do because we have this high hope, you know, we have, we've already imagined us like having kids walking down the aisle, <laughs> all of the things we've invested this time. And even though you have told me out of your mouth, this is not what you want. I'm not ready for this. This is not yada, 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 whatever you've told me. I'm just going to continue to invest, continue to give, continue to hope and pray and think that I can convince you to change your mind. And then yeah. I'm just going to be hurt and mad at you when you don't. So how do we get to the root of like, or is it possible for us to get to the root of like this men are from Mars, women are from Venus thing? Because I feel like we are so like our communication is so bad because you're saying something and I'm hearing something completely different or I'm hoping that you're saying what I want you to say and if you're not I can convince you to change your mind mm -hmm. about it what do we do about that so I, I said at this event I was at recently that too many women are more focused on how they feel than what he said mm. so he could say I don't want a relationship but if she feels but we could be great together <laughs> she will hold on to that rather than his actual words and I think that the key for men and women to get past this whole men are from Mars, women are from Venus, we have to start to understand we are not wired the same way. And what would what would do best is if I'm a man 
my goal is to get more emotionally in tune with you because I know that sometimes a woman is not going to always use her words to explain mm-hmm. how she's feeling. She wants you to pick up on things because women pick up on things. Women see the details, mm-hmm. so she, they want us to see the details. So we have to work on that. We won't ever be as good as women in most cases, Mm -hmm. but that's how we will be able to connect with her better. For women, she has to work on being more logical with her approach with him. All right? So he said this. This is what he said. Now handle it this way. Do not let your emotions get control you. You have to learn how to master your emotions. This is where the emotional intelligence comes Mm -hmm. in. And I think when women start to... Again, it doesn't mean stop being a woman because I want women to essentially walk in their feminine energy, tap into that energy. So I don't want you to go away from that. And you're, again, embrace the fact that you are an emotional creature, but you have to learn how to turn on that logical mind in those moments Mm -hmm. where it's going to be applicable. The same way the logical man has to turn on that emotional mind that he's, that being able to get in tune with the spirit in those moments that he needs it. And it's just the craziest thing to me. And I know that you see this all the time, but you can have the most intelligent, woman like at the height of her career a a super successful business woman but when it comes to the emotional side when it comes to making decisions in relationship it's like the logic like you said it goes out the window like all of those book smarts when it come to your boo it's like no forget what i know i'm thinking about what i feel or what i want and that is where we end up you know getting ourselves in trouble and then we blame them for what we allowed them to do exactly and and that's why people who give great advice don't always take their own advice Mm. because once you become emotionally invested mm-hmm. it's like your brain gets scrambled mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you just don't see straight anymore so it's it's a struggle for everybody in that regard so one of the things that i think is super hard for women to accept or it's a fact that they just might not know so i want you to speak it mm-hmm. how do men see sex what how, <laughs> what is sex to to men because i i have like i've i say this all the time like i have been blessed to have an older brother the homeboys i've had Mm. these conversations with several men a lot of women have not had this conversation with a man or heard a man having this conversation so from a man Mm. how do men view sex all right now real quick i'm just gonna say that there's always exceptions to the rule all right (laughs) and and some men are, are gonna see things differently I think for the majority of men, Mm -hmm. sex is just viewed as a pleasurable experience. That's it. A pleasurable physical experience. There may be some emotion a little bit in that moment, but it stays in that moment (laughs) for the most part. (laughs) It's just not much more than that for the guy. You know, I now don't get me wrong. And when I say there's emotion involved, I think when he actually likes the woman, he's in love with her. Then it becomes something more than just a physical experience, a chance to bond with her, get closer to her. But outside of that. Yeah, it's just physical pleasure. Do men have sex with women they don't like? Hell yeah. Look into that camera. Look <laughs> into that camera and say yeah. it. <laughs> why? Why, Stefan? Oh why? God. Not not only do men now let me, again, not all men, but not only do men have sex with women they don't like, there are tons of men who have sex with women they're not even attracted to. So so again, this is the men are from Mars, women are from Venus thing, because speaking for the majority of women. It's in, I can't even fathom a man on top of me that I don't like, I'm not interested in, I'm not attracted to. Suit. Like that, why would I do that? You all are totally. Well, so. Their heads are exploding <laughs> right now, Stefan. Their so heads listen, are exploding. So now, again, I'm one of those guys where I cannot sleep with someone I'm not attracted to. I'm very visual. I need that stimulation. Thank if that's God, you not got there, some standards. Okay. You know, I, I can't do it. But I know dudes. That have none. As long as you got legs and, and something in between, it's a oh. wrap, <laughs> okay? And, and, and they will have sex out of the mere convenience Just of it can, in that moment. Yeah, yes, yeah. because again, it is simply a pleasurable physical experience. They're viewing that woman as a chance to get off. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. And so, yeah, and as far as not liking her, because the reality is that he only has to tolerate her for that moment in time. This is why he may have sex with you, but he won't be in a relationship with you. He won't he even cannot, pick up the phone the next day, exactly, baby. He can't deal with you more than just that moment. But to engage physically, and again, in that physical moment, he doesn't have to worry about having talks with you and all this other stuff. So yeah, he can still enjoy you physically, but not care for you otherwise. So we're going to pause. <laughs> a moment of silence for y'all feelings. <laughs> And your edges. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, but I, I think, though, that, again, that's a major disconnect because women a lot of times um, mistake 
men wanting to sleep with them with men wanting to date them or, yeah. or, or court them or be in a relationship. And so... I, you know, I hear, shout out to Kevin Samuels, all right? <laughs> Kevin said, one of the things that Kevin Samuels says often that I do agree with, though, is that <clears throat> you cannot count the number of men who have tried to holler at you or try to have sex with you as the number of men who are interested in getting into a relationship Absolutely. with you. And so I think a lot of times women are mistaking one for the other and thinking, well, men are interested in me. You know, I am a catch. Mm -hmm. And just because men are interested in sleeping with you does not mean that you are necessarily what men are looking for when it comes to a relationship. Or so marriage. what's the difference? What would make a man say, okay, I'll have sex with you, but that's as far as it'll go? So, okay, there's various levels to it. For some men, it could be physical levels of physical attraction. So to put it in, in a more specific context so people can understand, if his standard for marriage is, I'm only going to marry a woman who's an 8 to 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, but he'll sleep with a 6. He'll sleep with a 5. You see what I'm saying? So there's enough, and maybe she's not that cute, but her body's banging. So he'll sleep with her because he really likes her body. He wants to try it out. Um, I know that sounds horrible, but I'm just... That's a real it, thing. It is what it is, Let yeah. Put that in my notes come back to that. <laughs> right. But again, he's not attracted to her enough physically to say, I want to spend my life with her. Because again, it's one thing to have to see you for the night. It's another thing to have to wake up and see you every day next to me. That requires a different level of attraction. Um, then, of course, there's just the qualities of a wife. Some women, again, may be really cool. Um, you may even enjoy hanging out with them, but you know you cannot deal with them over the long term as far as marriage. And let me say this. The reality is that women see the same issue or, or go through the same thing with men. It's just that women are willing to overlook we those red flags and yeah, still marry that man, yeah. but then be miserable and unhappy. Mm -hmm. The man knows, yo, like in a lot, don't get me wrong, plenty of men choose horribly uh, wives and partners, but a lot, like I remember one time in an Uber, a guy said to me, he was the driver. He said, you know, you hear in society, women are always being told the fantasy of the one waiting for that right guy, all that stuff. But what you see play out in dating and relationships is that men tend to hold on to that principle more than women. Mm -hmm. All right. Women Ooh. know of the one connection, but the minute they see something that they want, for whatever reason, one. yes, <laughs> I, I will make this work because this is what I desire right now. Mm. Whereas men, if they're just not feeling it enough, they're just not going to do it. And that's why I tell women, it's not a reflection of your value or your quality. Y'all two just don't fit together. Mm. He can really see or view you as a good woman, just not for him. So this is not a question that was on my list, but I just feel like because you're hurting feelings and snatching <laughs> edges, we might as well just snatch the whole wig off. Because I have literally had a conversation with a man. I hope he's not tuned in. It's not my man, <laughs> y'all. A man, not my man. But I've had a conversation with a man who has going back to like the 90 day rule thing and, and men trying to fit into women thinking that they're being in control and, you know, controlling how things are going, but men really having the big joker, like really, you know, pulling the Trump card. But I was having a conversation with a man who talked about a woman who had like a 90 day rule and she had mm -hmm. verbalized it. Big, big mistake. So she talked to him about it. You know, she's holding him to this standard and he literally told me, like, yeah, I just I just did what I had to do to get to the 90 days, you know, just basically to get her back for play, for playing games with him, mm -hmm. playing games with him. Like he did all of the right things, told me this out of his mouth that he did all of the right things, had these conversations, like took her out, did all of the things to play the game. So what is your advice for women who are watching for the red flags, asking the questions, like thinking that they're doing their due diligence and then they're just dealing with like a fraud? So I'm I'm very skeptical of any situation that proclaims that this man just fooled you the entire time. I always say a lot of times women don't get played, they play themselves. All right? Girl, they stop playing. <laughs> they see something. Mm -hmm. They pick up and and even if you can't say you saw something specific, you they sense, it. yes, they felt like something's not right. But again, they try to ignore it. So to me, you've got to be strong as a woman in the sense of accepting your intuition. Stop denying it. Stop running from it. And if you're spiritual, you've got to go to God and pray about the situation and asking God, not just looking for signs, hearing it in your <laughs> spirit like this is what I need to do right now. Because, I, again, I don't think anyone's that good of a liar. I think that mm. you let someone talk enough, they're going to expose themselves. You just have to know how to keep them talking. 
And so that requires conversations, asking questions, diving deeper, because it's very easy for people to either when they give you a BS answer, you can sense it or they just dance around the situation or mm-hmm, dismiss mm-hmm, it all together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and then there's a certain questions that men will and women will expose themselves on. Like if you ask a dude questions about handling finances in a relationship, he's very likely to tell you straight up what it is. So if you don't like the way that he does things, you don't have to keep guessing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you just have to have those conversations. But we we tend, when I say we, society tends to be scared to dive deeper early on. It's like, well, I don't want to run this run person away. away. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, yo, if they run away because you're diving deeper, they're not for you. Exactly. That's the way you exactly. weed them out. Yep. And that was literally a question that I have here because women do have such a hard time asking questions because they mm-hmm. don't want to be annoying. They don't want to push too much. They don't want to turn you off. So how do you toe the line between being interested and being inquisitive and digging deep but not like being annoying? Again, it's, annoying is a perception based off of likability. Basically meaning... Let's look at it from a woman's perspective. If 10 guys DM a woman right now, hey, you're beautiful, right? And you look at them dudes and all 10, they don't like them. So to you, they're, they're annoying, annoying, they're thirsty, whatever. <laughs> Mr. 11 says the same thing. Hey, beautiful. But you like this dude and now you're flattered. This is cute. It's not the action. It's how much you like them, and it's and as well when it comes to women, it's the energy that you're mm-hmm. giving off when you're asking these questions. That's true. If you're asking with an energy of interrogation, of you know being hard and and, and having an attitude, and and that can happen when you you ask the question because you're expecting a negative answer. Mm. You can't go into the conversation expecting something bad. You have to go in believe either clean slate. Or believing something positive, but prepared for something negative. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because when you prepare for negative, you project that. And that's the energy that's making you come off annoying or what's mm-hmm. wrong with her. Nah, she she got problems and now I don't want to deal with her no more. So what are some of those red flags that women can be showing that they might not recognize or that, the, you know, you don't know that you're presenting. Like, I might talk too much, but I don't know that I talk too much. I might say the wrong things. Maybe I'm not mm-hmm. talking too much, but I'm telling everybody all my business on the first date. Like, what are some of the, give us the game. Like, how can they get past, we sick of these first dates, stuff. we got to get past <laughs> number well, one. Again, I think, remember, like somebody uh, once said, rules are for people you don't like. So basically, when we like the person enough, we're way more flexible. So again, we have to understand that some of this is just based on the fact that it just wasn't clicking like that. There's no way around it. You can't force anything to happen. But the but one thing that popped in my head when you were asking that was, and I and I will say this, I don't think every I think the average man doesn't even pay attention to this. I pay attention to this and I still think it's women something that women should be mindful mm-hmm. of is when he is talking, are you jumping in before he even finishes? Are you over talking him? Now people will say, "Well, I'm getting excited. I'm just—I don't mean to cut them." No, but it shows you're not presently listening. And if I'm talking to men, I'm telling them that's a red flag. They need to be mindful of mm-hmm. because now what's going to happen is as you go further in that relationship and y'all having discussion, she don't listen no more. She always over talks. She always jumps in, cuts you off, and that's going to cause a problem. And so now when I you wanted to say <laughs> something, but I was holding it in, and, and that—that's where a lot of things go wrong because then what happens is. And it's a, it's a crazy thing because so the woman kind of dominates the conversation in that way, jumping in, cutting them off. And a lot of men, instead of correcting that situation with her, letting her know this is not acceptable, they cower to it. And now they end up becoming more silent. But then that only, only pisses her off even more because now you're not talking. Why aren't you opening up? So it just creates a, a snowball effect of, mm-hmm. of negative problems. And it's like it's just not worth it. So it needs to be nipped in the bud as early as possible. And of course, that goes for both sides. Both people need to learn to listen when the person is talking. Let them finish, then make your statement. So with that being said, do you recommend therapy for uh, any relationship, for you know relationships that are moving towards marriage? Do you not recommend therapy? Like what role do you think therapy plays in Absolutely. a relationship? Absolutely, everyone should be doing therapy. I don't care if you're single, dating, married. Like, I hate the idea that people think, well, why should we go to couples therapy if we're just in a, a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? Because well, you want to be more than that. Exactly. And even if you don't want to be more than that, it's to help you have a healthier dynamic. 
So one way or another, if you're going to remain in this situation and there are problems and you guys have not been able to resolve those problems amongst each other, then go to a third party. There's no reason why you shouldn't. So I definitely think, and especially before you get married. Especially. Like that to me is a huge mistake when people don't do marriage counseling before they get premarital counseling. So do you think it should be a deal breaker if you bring up the suggestion to go to therapy or counseling or whatever and your partner isn't prepared? If I'm honest, hell yeah. It should be a deal breaker. Only because my thing is, if you are unwilling to seek help to to rectify things now, what are we setting ourselves up for later? We're gonna because we can't always do this ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need help sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that's just a really big problem. And I think if someone knows that by not going, I will lose this relationship. And they're still unwilling to go. They, they that should just, tell you something. Exactly. Right? That's enough right there. So there's this thought around dating someone's potential. And I have my own thoughts about dating potential. And my theory kind of got skewed with like Michelle Obama because it's like, <laughs> how can you argue with this? Like, how can you argue? And Michelle, it worked out for her, right? What is your advice for a woman who comes to you and she says, you know, she describes this man and she says she's dating his potential. Like, she sees what he can become. I don't necessarily think it's a cookie-cutter answer, but what's your perspective on I it? I say hell no. Okay, um, it that's a cookie-cutter. Yeah, it's cookie-cutter. And let me let me use the whole Obama situation. There are people right now who invested in the lotto every week to try to win and eventually won. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make it a good investment <laughs> strategy. All right? Just because one or two people has... And not just one or two people. Just mm-hmm. because a small segment of people, because it's always exceptions to every rule, have success, that doesn't make it the wise choice. So, yes, Obama, she got lucky, or she was fortunate, whatever the case may be. But the for every one case of success, I got a thousand more of complete failure and destruction. All right? Mm-hmm. So, to me, it is extremely dangerous because... You have to be you have to ask yourself if this person does not get better from here will I be happy. They, there has to be a foundation. It doesn't mean we don't strive to continuously be better, but do they have a strong enough foundation that mm-hmm. I can be happy with? Because you're not guaranteed change will come, all right? And unfortunately, the potential you see they may not see in themselves. So it's like you're trying to drag them to a place that It's not in their heart to go to. It's almost like you'll have these scenarios where, let's say, a guy is a a plumber Mm -hmm. and he's making 60 grand. And the woman gets with him, but she wants a six figure man. But she says, you know, he has potential. He could own his own plumbing business. But that joker don't want to own the business. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody's not built for that. They're not wired for that. He is happy and content making 60,000. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. That's That's his his thing. That's his thing. Exactly. If you now try to make him be more than that, he will start to resent you. Facts. And you will resent him if he's not moving his feet fast mm-hmm. enough. So now y'all arguing about stuff because you're trying to make something happen that shouldn't, that did never existed here. There was never real potential here. It's what you want to believe. Mm-hmm. And so potential sometimes is an imaginary perception. So, ooh, say that one more time. Potential sometimes is an imaginary perception. So... What do you think about the idea of like dating, being equally yoked, dating down this whole there's a concept of like the high, the high value man. Everybody mm-hmm. wants the high value man, a six figure earner. The, you know, everybody wants that. But everybody is not necessarily qualified <laughs> for that. Like yeah. you're not a match to that. And yeah. so you get frustrated because you're not getting what you want. But what you want is not necessarily in alignment with who you are. Mm-hmm. My opinion. What is your opinion on dating I don't want to say dating down, but dating a person that's in alignment with where you are currently versus where you might see yourself. Because maybe you're not where you want to be, but you want to date somebody that's already there. Yeah. So I think one, let me say, I don't I'm not a fan of dating down in that way. To me, it's all about connection. If there's a connection with someone who other people perceive as lower status than you or whatever, I don't care about what they Mm -hmm. perceive. I don't even care if you've been brainwashed to see it that way. If there's a connection, you should embrace it. Mm -hmm. If there's not, you should walk away. But I think the way people need to look at it, I'll give an analogy. There's tons of people who want to have a G-Wagon, right? And when they dream about having a G-Wagon, they're only thinking about the luxury of having it, the enjoyment of having this nice car. But what you don't realize is when you when you go to buy it, 
that payment's gonna be serious. That maintenance is gonna be serious. Oof. There's a there's a level of stress that might come with mm-hmm. this car. So you have to ask yourself, am I willing to do the things that it takes to even maintain this, all right? Now, if you get to the, the dealership and you realize this G-Wagon is, is too much for me, all right? And now you find you a nice Honda, all right, that, that drives what you need to do, and you're happy in your Honda. To me, you didn't date down. You didn't downgrade in your car. You found what was best what for, you, for you, yep. what works for you. There's this middle ground of where I can be happy with what I'm receiving and I'm happy with what I have to give in return. Mm-hmm. You see, a lot of women, when they think about quote unquote high value men, they're only thinking about what I'm gonna receive. They're not considering what I'm gonna have to give. A whole lot. Exactly, and it's like, yo, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't wanna give all that. Mm-hmm. So let me go be with a man who's in that range that I can have that trade off that I'm happy with. And, and, and two, having a type. Mm-hmm. How has in your you know in your experience with women, how has their type been either helping their situation or hurting them being able to find who they're looking for? It it so I, I won't put it like this. I think there's nothing wrong with having a type in regards to what you're attracted to is what you're attracted to. I think it's problematic when it's like Is if, that true? What you're attracted to is what you're attracted to? Yeah, I do think. Like physically or just period overall? I think in a lot of different ways. It could be physically, it could be emotionally. There's various things that you're going to be trying. So, for example, me as a man. Um, so, I, I, I think, one, we have to understand that I believe we all have internal wiring. Like mm-hmm. some people think you live life and you become who you want to be. No, I believe you are who you are from day one. You have to live life to figure it out mm-hmm. and then live that to the best of your ability. So, what I've come across is like, there are some women out there who like a lavish lifestyle, all right? Love taking care of themselves, getting their hair done, nails done. They love that. And there's some women who don't want to deal with that at all, all right? Now, I am attracted to the women that like taking care of themselves, that like that lifestyle. So to me, there's not going to be an attraction to... There might be a physical attraction to that woman who doesn't like doing those things, but can we sustain that over the long run? That's the problem. It's all, so let's flip it. If you're a woman who likes to live a nice lifestyle mm-hmm. and you compromise and say, I'm going to get with this frugal man. Like I knew a couple who the woman likes likes nice things and the man was one of those dudes, if he found a couch on the corner, he dust it off, take it home, we got a new couch. Not going to work. <laughs> right? Not going to work. And over time, it would piss her off. And now you being pissed off turns into you don't want to sleep with him right now because you're annoyed. That turns into him having an attitude. You see, and again, it's a snowball effect. We overlook these small things mm-hmm. that we don't fit in and we don't realize how that turns into the big issue yeah. later. So to me, going back to the whole attraction thing, I do think there's certain types of people. There may be certain physical attributes that people are naturally attracted to. Mm-hmm. But where the type comes into a play where it's a problem is when you hold so strong to it, you ignore the fact that sometimes we're attracted to people who didn't fit our type. All right. You have to be flexible in Mm -hmm, that way. mm -hmm. You can have your type, but understand it may not always play out that exact way. So as a man may love tall women. Right. But if he comes across a short woman that he's drawn to, has a connection, everything's great. It would be foolish to overlook her because, well, she's not my type. Mm-hmm, you see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, I think for women, though, the type thing comes down to more than physical. Oh, absolutely. I mean, only because I think for a, a lot of women end up in this revolving door when it comes to relationships where it's a new man but the same situation over and over because of their type. Mm-hmm. Not they look alike, but it's the the type of, the way that he picked you up, what he said to you, the type of conversation he has, the, you know, the, that type. And that is what gets us into trouble a lot of times because that, that type is usually based on like, you know, the butterflies, like Mm. the bad boy thing, you know, that is what is fun and exciting. Not the bugaboo, not the one that's saying, you know, the nice, sweet Well, you know what? So so I actually was speaking to somebody in my DM, actually. uh, It's going down in the DM? Public figure, public figure needing some help. And we had this conversation because she actually recently left a really good guy because she typically likes a bad boy or whatever. And I explained to her, I think society mislabels what's really going on here. The issue isn't that women like bad boys mm-hmm. or men who treat them poorly. They like masculine men. Okay. All right? Plain and okay. simple. If you are a man who can be loving, respectful, nice, all that stuff, but still be masculine, you're going to get women left and right. They're going to still love you. All right? Are there some women who may have this 
you know, let's say he, she just likes a hood dude and he has to be <laughs> a hood dude. But listen, I've met women who she may have d- dated hood dudes her whole life. But if she meets a dude who has that masculine energy and doesn't look exactly like the hood, she's still drawn to that man. Gotcha. I think it's the masculine energy. So what women have to understand is you're and that's why you have to be flexible and realize it's not the type. It's the energy. It's the attraction. It's those fundamental things mm. that you have to now evaluate because there are tons of good masculine men. You don't have to have the dude who treats you like crap to have a masculine man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's the same way women will say, oh, well, men just want hoes. Ain't no man waking up saying, I can't wait to marry a hoe. Like, that's, not, that's not what the though. man thought. Y'all is. are <laughs> smashing them yeah. down. Yeah, smashing and marrying is two different things. But the point is, is he attracted to hoes or is he attracted to women that present themselves in a way physically that he's drawn to? Is he attracted to women who like to look good? Is he attracted to women who have nice bodies? Because if he's just attracted to hoes, then you can find you an unattractive hoe and he would still want her. But that's not what happens. He's only going after attractive women that look a certain way. So it's not really about her being a hoe. But what happens is, again, the, the, opposite, the side who is not who loses in that situation, loves to mislabel the the issue. So the Mm -hmm, man mm -hmm. will say, women just want a bad boy rather than accepting. Nah, bruh, you're not masculine enough. You have to work on that. Women, he just wants hoes. No, you're not presenting yourself Mm. properly. You're not being effective in how you you exude your energy. That's the reality of it. I, I waited. I ain't want to cut you off. <laughs> I appreciate that. When I get that. home, my I man appreciate. gonna be like, "See how he got you?" Go, yeah, I'm sorry, baby. I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> so you just brought up something that reminded me, y'all. When I don't know, I don't think this is the first time we went and grabbed lunch years and years ago, Stefan. And Stefan does this thing where if you ever like sit down with a therapist, they start therapeutic. <laughs> so he's like, "Yo." Your hard exterior, you you all business, you know, you're making this face. And he was literally <laughs> like breaking down to me what men see when they sit down with me, which mm-hmm. was a benefit. I ain't really like how he did it, <laughs> but it was helpful. Right. Yeah. For a lot of women, we are buttoned up, business minded, boss energy. And that is not attractive to most men. Exactly. How do we break down that tough exterior not to the point where we have to be someone that we're not but how do we navigate you know being who we are but then being who who a man appreciates a woman to be okay so first thing let's clarify it's not attracted to the men that women actually want and like right because what i always find is that that boss woman that masculine woman she's getting dudes who want her she's just not getting the ones she wants Mm -hmm. to want her that's the disconnect Mm -hmm. so yes um Going back to your question, it's, it's about understanding that, one, how we perceive ourselves isn't always how others perceive us. So I always encourage women, like I have a membership group and I tell them, like, listen, ask men how they see you. Don't let your girlfriends tell you because they're going to validate things mm-hmm. because if they're negative, too, they're not going to call you out for being negative. Or recognize it. Exactly. It's almost like think about an ext- a morbidly obese person. They're not going to call out another morbidly obese person and say you need to lose some weight. Right. What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? Sense. Because they're going to they're gonna validate that mm-hmm. whole thing because mm-hmm. they're walking in it, too. So women have to be mindful of that, that, yes, how you're coming off is going to have a huge role in how people receive you. And and the the pushback I get is well I am feminine. I'm you know when I'm in a relationship, I'm sweet, I'm submissive, I'm this, I'm that. And I'm like, yeah, but how would he know that? You got to get there. Exactly. Have, yeah. You're not exuding that energy that lets him see that you have even that I hate to use the word potential, but in essence that's what it is in some cases or it's just you are that feminine woman. And so a lot of women think well he should take time to figure it out. Ain't nobody got time for that. Especially, again, this is where we're going into the type of man you want. You want some successful, well-put-together man. He don't have time to be surveying the situation and digging deep into every Mm -hmm. woman who catches his eye. Do you know how time-consuming that is? And and one of the analogies I love to use, because I even use this analogy in regards to why people should be using physical attraction as an evaluator for relationships, And I'm like, if you had Walmart hiring for cashier, Mm -hmm. paying minimum wage, and they only got five applicants coming to them, they got time to sit down with every applicant, dig deep, and figure out who they want to hire. If you're Google and you're hiring a position making six, seven figures, 
You got thousands of people submitting their resume. You ain't got time to evaluate and interview everyone. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You start to weed them out. How do companies weed them out? Well, back in the days it was, if your resume don't even look right, forget what's on it. Mm -hmm. If the paper's wrong, if the color's wrong, if the texture is bad, in the garbage. You could have been an amazing candidate. You won't make it to the next stage. The cut. So you got to understand that when you're trying to date in that pool mm -hmm. of men, and in general, it would be beneficial to be mindful of what are you exuding that allows you to attract those kind of people and for them to see that you can be the woman that they would want to entertain. So what are some of these feminine things? Because it's hard out here, Stefan. We got... <laughs> Listen, I'm really loving that social media has this whole like soft woman thing, like this mm -hmm. whole soft woman movement. I am loving it because I'm tired of working hard. But most black women were raised to believe that we had to work hard. Like if we're not working hard, if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we are not independent, if we can't do it all and handle it all and be strong, then we're not doing it right. So now we're 30 plus and the men are like, yo, you too hard. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is who I am. So what are some things that we can start to do? You know, maybe wear pink or, you know, wear some softer colors. I think yeah. we talked about that. <laughs> See, I was listening. He was like, yo, you showing up with all this black. I, I got my man with my black on though, y'all. So we don't know about that rule. But I do remember you saying it. But what Exceptions else can we do? Exceptions to every rule. Exceptions to every rule. Those things do matter, though. Yes. but So the first step is, though, stop saying this is who I am. It's not who you are. It's who you have become because you've been conditioned to believing mm -hmm, this is what mm -hmm. it should be. You become comfortable in your masculine energy and detached from your femininity. But the reality is that that feminine energy is still in you, which is, again, why when you're in a relationship or when you're emotionally vulnerable, it comes, it comes out. out yeah. Or even better, some of these same women who are so hard put them around kids mm -hmm. and they're joyful, they're mm -hmm, sweet or mm -hmm. whatever. Put them around a man, they shut the whole thing down. <laughs> no more feminine energy. So the reality is that you're, Ooh, it's not that you're not feminine. Okay. It's that you don't view the child as a threat. Right. All right. You view men as a threat. Mm. And because of that, you become defensive around men, but you're not guarded around children. That same energy that you give kids, give that to a man, see what happens. I remember one time I had a client um, so I, I think she came to an event mm -hmm. and I had that whole speech about feminine energy and she came to me afterward and she said, you know, um, she had, she was dating this guy, her son who was like 22 in college, comes home for the weekend and she said the whole weekend she's serving him, calling baby what you need, boom, boom, boom. The child leaves, go back to school, the boyfriend looks at her and say, why you never talk to me like that? Mm -hmm. You, you talk to him with all this great, I don't ever get none of that and that's when she realized, damn. I'm really be, you know, giving them that hard energy. You have it. You just have issues stopping you from giving it to the man. I think you just saved some souls out there, Stefan, because I hope so. <laughs> listen, for for a woman who presents with, you know, some masculine energy, <laughs> it's like learning a second language for someone to tell me to like, you know, become feminine. It's like, mm. well, how do you do that? But it is a totally different energy when when a child is around. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, you just melt yeah. versus a man. And it's like, yo, what's up? Bro? Exactly. You know, like, it's, it's like you have to be on guard. You're defensive. So I hope y'all just caught that gem because that was a really, really good one. I, I, I appreciate that. And I think, too, when you mentioned, you know, the whole take me as I am thing, it's also I believe that that we were raised to think like we are the prize. Mm -hmm. So you should be happy with what you get. Like, this is who I am. This is what you get. And you should be happy with with how I'm coming. But you need to rise to the occasion. You need to rise to my standards. So how do we, I guess, let go of the thought that we are the prize? Like, because we're both winning, hopefully. Exactly. So the thing is, Women are not the prize. Men and women are the prize. We are the prize. A, a good man is a blessing to a woman. A good woman is a blessing to a man. Everybody want to use the scripture, he who finds a wife. <laughs> Listen, stop. Stop with all that, all right? Number one, it, it doesn't even mean that a man's supposed to go chasing after women because she's the prize. That ain't what it means. That's not what it means, no. Because to find does not mean to necessarily go search or chase. I could be walking down the street, do -do -do. found a dollar, I found a dollar. I wasn't looking for the dollar, but I found it. You see what I'm saying? So I don't have to be looking for this woman, but I've come across a great woman, and now I've found something okay, good. You see okay, what I'm saying? Okay. So this idea that I have to be pursuing it always is not true. And again... That's how it is, too. Y'all don't be looking for wives. You just, oh, there's <laughs> some, one. Some men are. I, listen, I know some men in Atlanta, 
six figure earners talking about they can't find a wife. T- bring them out. down Stressed to the studio because I got the ladies for them. Stressed out. They're like, it's it's a struggle. But again, it's a struggle because certain attributes are being overlooked, in my opinion. All right. But to go back to the whole uh, men seeking out and, and, and well, how, how do we get into that again? We're I talking about us both being the prize. <laughs> yes. All right. So. I believe that whole I'm the prize is a very toxic mindset. It's a very sabotaging mindset. Because, again, what women don't realize is, especially if you're trying to date quality men, it, there's a lot of different angles to look at. One, you can't build a healthy relationship if it's one-sided. Mm-hmm. And what p- women who believe in this whole men should chase women fail to realize is, when you look at relationships where the man had to chase, in most cases, what happens is, after he finally gets her, he stops the effort. Because to him, if I did all this to get you and now I got you, now it's my turn. I done did all this chasing. Where's the return on my investment now? Mm-hmm. And, and But because she's so conditioned to him doing all the work, she doesn't know how to step up in that way. So now it, it becomes lopsided. And now or because she doesn't want to lose him, he she's now the one-sided relationship. She's mm. doing everything and he's sitting back. You, how you start is how you finish. You start one-sided, you're going to end one-sided, all right? You want this to make a, a mutual effort, you have to start from the beginning a mutual effort. But also there's the layer of understanding. If you're dating a quality man, y'all have to understand. I don't, I don't want women to get into the mindset of competition, but you do have to be aware that there's another woman who will show him that attention, who will show him she wants him. There's a, a book, I always forget the name of the damn book, but there's a book that surveyed uh, married couples after they got their marriage license. And there was a bunch of questions, mm-hmm. but they asked the men, you know, why did you marry this woman? And one of the most popular answers they got was because she liked me. And what that means is men are so accustomed to having to do all the work. Mm-hmm. When a woman actually shows interest and desire and matches his energy, he's drawn to that. Men want to feel wanted too. So if he has to always be the one to do everything, he's going to burn out at some point. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be able to sustain that. And again, if he has other women showing him more interest, why would he choose you over them? Which is why if you ever see a situation where a man is dating two women, one is the crazy woman and one is the more good, chill woman, who does he usually choose? Crazy. Crazy. Why is he choosing the crazy? Because she likes him so much. Exactly. It's not because she's crazy. It's not because he loves drama. It's because she makes him feel wanted. Mm. Where the other woman says, well, no, he's supposed to chase me. He's supposed to come at the... All right. Well, then that's why he chose her. So... <laughs> y'all. Take, take no, time. yeah, I'm like... <laughs> That's a, that's that that might be part two. That might be the next episode because that really is like the round and round, you know, merry go round, and we end up with results that we don't want, and it's because we are, I guess, not self aware enough to know those things, are not mm. willing to be honest enough um, to to recognize those things. But it's a hard, it's a tough pill to swallow when you have to realize that you actually got to do some work on yourself. Um, so that you can show up and be in alignment to this man that you want to be a match to. Cause... Absolutely. And I think the other problem is like the, the 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 mentality of when he shows me enough, I'll do this is a problem. Even with the whole feminine energy, like I've seen uh, there was a quote. I forgot who quoted it, but there was like, you know, uh, a woman is going to be feminine to a man who makes her feel safe and all mm-hmm, these mm-hmm, things. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. I do believe that a masculine man naturally pulls femininity out of a woman. All right. However, if you're making it his responsibility for you to be feminine, you lost. Mm. You should master your own femininity. The, the, the approach should be, I will always be a feminine woman. And once a man shows he's not worthy of it, I will remove myself. Not, I'm going to come in hard. And once he shows me enough, then I'm going to be feminine. By that time, he left he's you. Not he's gone. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah. But the ones who will be interested, toxic men men who don't got nothing going on for themselves, men who will overlook your hardness because they're looking to gain in other areas. Mm. They need you for stability. They need you for a place to stay. They need you for your car. (laughs) We can go on and on. Those men will tolerate all those things because they value the other stuff. But to the man who has it, 
He doesn't care about that stuff. So the fact that you can keep getting a man, if it's a bad man, that's literally proof to you of what you what you're putting out because that's what you're attracting. It, well, I'll say this because I I do believe it's not always about what you attract; it's what mm -hmm. you entertain. So there Ooh, is a matter yes. of because I think Thank yeah, you. you could be an amazing woman. You're gonna attract some bad men. But if you keep entertaining them, that does speak to an issue going on within you. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So I ain't mad at you because that's what you're attracting, but why are you entertaining it? But yes, if all you attract is that, <laughs> that's it. That's a problem too. You see what Something's I'm saying? Wrong, yeah. Because if you are a woman that's exuding the right qualities, you're going to be able to say, I do meet good men. Even if you say, I haven't met a good man that I wanted, mm -hmm. that's fine. But to say you're not meeting any, that's a problem. Red flag. Flag yes. on the play. So for the ladies out there who are like, I want this to be my last season as a single woman. They just need a couple pieces of advice. Like three quick <laughs> tips. Three quick tips. Three things that they can do right now. All right. I mean. Besides it, all it, of the gems you've already dropped. I mean, because it, it encompasses everything we talked about. Healing is number one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the foundation of it. So they want things to change. They have to heal. There's just no way around that. All right. Number two is tap into your feminine energy. Women who tap into their femininity, they start winning, plain and simple. It's, and not only does it get you the potential of relationship, business will get better. Life will get better. Everyone will want to be around you. And for those who don't think the energy is a problem, some of y'all don't like your own mothers, your own sisters. Why? Because they got an attitude. Why? Because they're so hard. So then why do you make excuses for that kind of energy when it comes to dating? If you don't want to deal with them, why would a man want to deal with them? And if she's like that with you, if she's like that with you, trust and believe she's worse with men. That's the other thing. I have to say this. That's something that women don't understand. Women look around and say, there's all these wonderful women. Y'all don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Some of these women are savage. All right? The things that they're doing to these men, <laughs> y'all would be shocked. Okay? Y'all have no understanding because what y'all have to realize is, and I'm not saying you, like you, but a lot of women in general, a lot of women do not reveal all the details to their friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they view women as she will turn on me and she'll throw it back in my face. And who else makes that complaint? Men. Men are afraid to open up because women tend to throw things back in your face. But when a man makes that argument, is that a woman he's thing? being ridiculous. It is more of a woman thing than a man thing simply because the action of throwing things back in your face is someone who allows their emotions to get the best of them. And because women are more emotionally wired, they're more susceptible to having those moments. All right. So they just get caught up and then it comes out. And then they pull back once they, the fog clears. It's like, damn, what did I just say? Shouldn't have said that. It's more likely. Now, do men do this? Of course, because there's a lot of men who have not mastered their emotions. There's a lot of broken men. So I'm not saying that men don't do it. But because women are emotionally wired, they're more susceptible to having a moment where they lose sight and they throw things in your face or whatever. And again, y'all have experienced that as girlfriends. Mm -hmm. So why do you think she's so much better with a man? She's going to be worse with a man because she's more emotionally invested. The more emotionally invested you are, remember what I said earlier, once you're emotionally invested, the brain kind of mm -hmm. scrambles. Yep. That's why you have to master that aspect. So healing, healing, tap into your feminine energy. And this next one may not apply to everyone, but learn how to talk to and listen to God. Ooh, Plain okay. and simple. So many women would save themselves so many headaches if they just listen to God. So many women would not end up in the wrong relationship if they just listen to God. There are situations where a woman might have met a great guy, and I believe in right person, wrong time, mm -hmm. and things didn't go right right now. And again, emotionally, they, they let that get the best of them and say, all right, forget him, and then they end up getting with some other dude. Not only getting some other dude, maybe even, maybe even getting pregnant by the other dude, right? But if you would have prayed and talked to God, he may have told you just to chill out. Because he knows it was coming back around. And when there's a connection, it always comes back around at some point. Let me not say always, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it's, it's going to come back. back around. The problem is what have people done in the meantime mm -hmm. to either allow you two to come together later or make it even harder. But again, aside from that, in general, it's just learning how to get in tune with your spirit, hearing God, letting God guide you. Because listen, my advice, other people who give advice, it's great. I want you to consider it, but I still want you to go back to God and pray about what you heard and see what applies to you. 
Yes. Look, we'll drop the mic on that one, but not really, because you got to <laughs> let the people know. You said you have a membership. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they want to get in because they need more of these gems. So let them know where they can find you online, how they can get your books, all that good stuff. All right. So you can get... Uh into my membership, going to receivingmyblessings.com. Come all on right? now. Receivingmyblessings.com. Mm -hmm. Join today. It's gonna, there's going to modules on tapping into your feminine energy, healing, hearing from God. Basically, everything we talked about. <laughs> all right, finding your purpose. All of that is in the program. Uh, we do lives twice a month. It's amazing. So check it out, receivingmyblessings.com. And on Instagram, he is at Stefan Speaks. Correct. Y'all, we are at Girl Stop Pod on Instagram. Make sure you are following us. Like, comment, subscribe to the show. And make sure you share this episode with a friend who wants to make this their last single season. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Peace out. Girl, hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. This channel is all about encouraging you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. And comment below and let me know what you want to see on the next video. Peace out.